September 2024. We have with us today Chief, in uh, Chief Superintendent Lynn Ratcliffe, Divisional Commander, Chief Inspector Graham Galley, Area Commander for East Renfrewshire, Inspector Brian Eaglesham, and we really warmly welcome Kevin Murphy uh, to his first Cabinet Police and Fire, Area Commander for East Renfrewshire, Renfrewshire and Inverclyde, and we have Alan Cochtery, Group Commander for East Renfrewshire. So, um, if we can go on to the first item on the agenda, which is report apologies for absence. I do have an apology from Councillor Dave Lynch. Yeah. And Gordon Wallace, we're not sure at, at this stage. Okay. Um, so, if we could move on to item, uh, any declarations of interest? None. So, if we can move on to item number three, which is the Police Scotland performance report for the first quarter of 24 25. And Lynn's going to take this for us. Thank you. Chair, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair members, I'm delighted to be here in person as local police commander for uh, Greater Glasgow, of course, including East Remshire, pre to present the local police plan update for quarter one, which covers April, May and June of 2024. And I'm joined today, as you've highlighted, Chair, by Chief Inspector Graham Galley and uh, Inspector Brian Eaglesham, whom I know are familiar faces to, to, to all of you. So I'm pleased to report that in terms of, of policing in East Renfrewshire, quarter one has seen some extremely positive results and outcomes, with housebreakings at the lowest level for five years, motor vehicle crime down by over 20%, frauds down by almost 30%, and proactivity in relation to drug supply offences up by 50%. As Chief Inspector Galley will highlight in greater detail, despite all of this, there is no room for complacency, and we maintain our focus on prevention and driving crime down, combined with robust investigation and detection of offenders over the course of the year. Tackling violence against women and girls remains a priority for us, and members will note that recorded sexual crimes rose during quarter one. Approximately 50 per cent of all reported sexual crime relates to historical incidents, often with victims having the courage and the confidence to come forward and report several crimes committed over a period of months or sometimes years. So whilst the number of crimes has increased, this thankfully does not always correlate with there being more victims of such crimes. In addition, detection rates for sexual and some other crimes, just by way of context, traditionally appeared low over the, the course of the first part of the performance year. But as forensic and technical investigations and analysis are completed, and the um, offenders charges as a result of this work, detection rates tend to increase over the course of the second part of the year. As the report highlights in many areas, we continue to work very closely with a variety of partners to educate, inform and support individuals and groups across the community on a number of topics and issues. And the benefits of this collaborative partnership approach was or were, in my opinion, very much underlined by the way in which communities came together in the wake of the disorder and violence that we sadly saw in some areas in England and Northern Ireland. I would, I would like to extend a sincere thanks to all our local elected members here in East Renfrewshire, colleagues at East Renfrewshire Council, partners across the area and our communities for all their support and good sense during what was a very challenging time. And I know that also this caused grave concern in many of our communities, whom I hope were reassured by the direct engagement, reassurance visits and increased patrols which were put in place. I am really grateful for the ongoing contact, communication and time given by, by um, many of the, the people who are here today and indeed many elected members to dial into the briefing I delivered and the overall support in reinforcing the messaging around responsible use of social media, which unfortunately played a significant part in fueling anxieties. Again, another sterling example of the value of the partnerships that exist here and how we can come together at times of need to inform and protect our communities. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, Chair, I'll just carry on with the report if you're happy. Uh, first of all, we'll look at acquisitive crime. Uh, the success of East Renfrewshire as a destination to live, work and play can attract criminals intent on carrying out acquisitive crime. We have a strong focus on this crime area, and along with the community, we remain vigilant to react to any increase in offences. I'm pleased to report that for the first quarter of this year, housebreakings are at the lowest level they have been for five years. There were 11 housebreakings this quarter, which is over 50% lower than the same period last year. 
We have also successfully maintained last year's impressive 21% decrease in motor vehicle crime, with 22 offences being recorded over the three-month period of this quarter. We will continue to focus our resources to deter, disrupt and detect criminals, criminal activity in this area. Now looking at crimes of dishonesty in more detail. Overall, crimes of dishonesty are down 8% compared to last year. We are not complacent and are acutely aware that this time crime still has a negative impact on individuals' ability to feel safe and secure. We continue to promote positive messaging in relation to the decrease in this crime type through our community engagement at community council meetings. Whilst common theft is down 20% on last year, Theft by shoplifting continues to increase nationally. There were 75 theft by shoplifting offences recorded in East Renfrewshire for this quarter, which is up from 56 from the same period last year. We are working with, our retail, with retailers to promote best practice and to offer advice and guidance in relation to securing stock and premises. While fraud offences continue to increase across other areas of Scotland, I am happy to report that East Renfrewshire has seen a 28% decrease in frauds for the first quarter of this year compared to last. This equates to 37 offences compared to 51 for the same period last year. Now looking at public protection. The total number of sexual crimes recorded for this quarter are 41. This is an increase of 10 compared to the same period last year. We have successfully detected 37% of sexual crimes during this quarter. Significant work has taken place nationally and locally around raising awareness and encouraging the reporting of sexual offences. This includes the reporting of non-recent offences, which often uncover a series of crimes. Work has also been carried out around highlighting the increased significance of distressed evidence for corroborating serious sexual offending. All of these factors contribute to an increase in reporting and submissions to the courts as outlined by the Commander earlier. Now looking at uh, sexual offences in domestic incidents. This year we have recorded a 5% increase in domestic incidents reported to the police. Over this reporting period, a third of all domestic abuse incidents attended by the police in East Remshire have resulted in a crime being recorded. The 52 criminal incidents have resulted in 85 offences being recorded. With the support of our Domestic Abuse Investigation Unit and our safeguarding team, we have supported victims and successfully detected 64% of domestic offences during this period. We all have a part to play in eradicating domestic abuse from society, and I thank our partners for their support. Now looking at drug dealing and misuse. We continue to pursue those who target vulnerable members of our communities through the supply of drugs. In this quarter, six offences have been successfully recorded in relation to the supply of drugs, which is 50% higher than the same period last year. We have also recorded a 17% increase in offences relating to the possession of drugs, with 35 recorded for this quarter. Where vulnerable individuals are identified, we signpost them to support agencies and partners for help and advice. Now, looking at violent crime. I'm pleased to report that non-sexual crimes of violence are 8% lower than the same period last year, with 136 offences recorded. Compared to last year, serious assaults are down from 8 to 5. We have also su successfully detected an accused in each case of serious assault. Offences within the category of robbery, including assault with intent to rob, have dropped from 7 to 4 for the first quarter, with two of these offences being successfully detected. Common assaults have increased slightly from 98 to 109 for this reporting period. We have successfully detected 65% of common assaults, and importantly, we have not identified any significant trends or vulnerable groups. Now looking at antisocial behaviour and disorder, last year, saw the lowest number of complaints regarding disorder recorded in the last five years. For this reporting period, there have been 483 complaints regarding disorder. This is the same number as last year 
and in line with the three-year average. Our multi-agency strategic and tactical groups established last year to tackle antisocial <coughs> behaviour and disorder continue to involve and are actively looking at areas of best practice within restorative justice and community engagement to widen our impact. Our officers also continue to monitor and review trends or areas of concern and are proactively targeting hotspots relating to antisocial behaviour which has seen the number of targeted stop searches increase from 76 to 127 for this period. Now looking at further uh, at disorder and antisocial behaviour, I am happy to report that the innovative work carried out last year with East Renfrewshire Council and the Scottish and Fire and Rescue Services to tackle criminal damage and reckless behaviour has delivered noticeable results. The Fire Outreach Programme, led by Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, alongside the numerous proactive interventions carried out by all involved, has supported this approach. The success in addressing fire raisings shown in the final quarter of 23-24 has been replicated again in the first quarter of 24-25. There has been a 67% decrease in fire raising offences compared to last year, bringing the total to five for this quarter. There were 109 vandalisms recorded over this quarter, which is a reduction of 8% compared to the same period last year. The work carried out last year to slow down the rate of culpable and reckless conduct offences has now delivered a significant reduction in these offences. There have been six offences recorded, which is down from 14 for the same period last year. Now, Chair, I would like to look at our areas of focus in terms of examples of work carried out by officers in East Renfrewshire. In April, an 18-year-old male was seriously assaulted by a glass bottle within an open space in Newton Merms. Police conducted inquiries and arrested two 18-year-old males in relation to this offence. The two males were charged to appear at court at a later date. In June, police were contacted to attend an ongoing disturbance within a public park in the East Renfrewshire with concerns for a male in possession of a knife. Specially trained taser officers were deployed immediately to the scene with a 35-year-old male being arrested and found in possession of a knife. The male was charged with multiple offences and held in police custody for court. During this quarter, officers were called to an ongoing disturbance on a street in Barhead. Reports were received of a 49-year-old male causing fear and alarm in the community whilst in possession of an axe. Response police attended promptly, tracing the male nearby. He was arrested and charged with various offences and held for court the next day. Now looking at drug supply and manufacture, we do rely on our communities for information surrounding drug misuse and supply. Local officers maintain good relationships with their communities and partners to tackle the harm and concerns caused by controlled <coughs> drugs. Our local problem-solving team continue to proactively tackle drug misuse and harm in our communities. In April of this quarter, acting on intelligence, our officers conducted a property search under warrant in the Nielsen area. The 26-year-old male householder was arrested and charged for being in possession of controlled drugs with intent to supply. In June, officers were carrying out proactive patrols in the Eaglesham area. During this time, a 48-year-old female was found in possession of Class A controlled drugs. The female was cautioned, charged and reported to the courts. Now looking at crimes of dishonesty. Criminals continue to develop and uh, devise ever-changing methods to commit fraud. Recent crime trends suggest offenders are utilising telephony to impersonate persons in position and trust, including that of police officers. During this period, victims aged 75, 78 and 86 were defrauded of a sum totalling £28,000. Extensive inquiries were carried out by local police and our criminal investigation department, resulting in an 18-year-old male being charged with multiple fraud-related offences across multiple policing divisions. During this quarter, local officers were within our community with a scam van to provide reassurance 
and advice to local residents on how to protect themselves against scammers. Now looking at uh, vulnerable road users. Keeping all road users safe remains a top priority. Officers have uh, communicated and engaged with the public to improve driver behaviour, creating safer roads for our communities and using enforcement as a proportionate measure. In April of this quarter, near to Busby, a 25-year-old male cyclist was knocked from his pedal cycle by a 91-year-old motorist. Police attended, resulting in the driver of the vehicle being charged with careless driving and the circumstances reported to the courts. During this quarter, local officers conducted a day of action surrounding Police Scotland's Operation Close Pass. This operation helps to remind road users of the importance of leaving sufficient space whilst passing cyclists. During this day of action, we positively engaged with road users and members of the public. In May, officers were alerted to concerns for a female manner of driving in the Nielsen area. Police attended and carried out an area check, locating the vehicle and the driver. A 39-year-old female was found to be under the influence of alcohol whilst driving. She was arrested and conveyed to police custody to appear at court at a later date. Now looking at domestic abuse, adult protection and child protection. Tackling domestic violence and ensuring domestic survivors have the confidence to come forward remains a local and national priority. In April of this quarter, police were alerted to an ongoing domestic incident in Eaglesham. A 46-year-old female was subject to a torrent of verbal and physical abuse from her 32-year-old male partner within the family home. Police attended, with the male perpetrator being arrested and charged with multiple offences. He was held to appear at court the next lawful day. Police Scotland remain vigilant when enforcing bail conditions set by the courts and will routinely engage with domestic abuse survivors and perpetrators to ensure conditions are being met. In May of this quarter, police were alerted by a partner agency to a suspected breach of domestic bail. Police acted quickly, resulting in a 65-year-old male being arrested and charged for breaching domestic bail conditions. He was held to appear at court for the next lawful day. Now looking at young people. In this quarter, campus officers have continued to support and engage with young persons within our school environment. Our campus police officers have carried out school inputs regarding a wide range of topics, including staying safe online, alcohol and drug misuse, antisocial behaviour and vaping. Our campus officers form strong bonds within the school environment and regularly support younger children with, within primary school for their transition to secondary school. Throughout this quarter, we have engaged with partners within the Community Alcohol Partnership Trust to inform parents and young people about the risks and dangers of alcohol consumption by minors. In April, we attended several public space, spaces distributing information booklets and advice to parents of teenagers, helping to provide assistance on how to engage with teenagers regarding these risks. So, Chair, that brings me to the end of the report. Uh, but I'd like to also highlight... Uh, something that took place last week. We had our Division of Commanders Award Ceremony, uh, which takes place in Glasgow City Chambers. And there was three officers from East Renfrewshire uh, Policing Division who received awards that day. So I'd like to highlight the work of uh, Constable Darren McGowan and Alexandria Murphy. Uh, both of these officers are probationary officers, still within the two-year training period. Uh, both officers received an award for saving a young man's life earlier this year. Uh, the officers were called to an incident in the Clarkson area where they found a young man seriously injured uh, with numerous puncture wounds. Uh, the male collapsed in front of the officers and without hesitation they immediately acted to preserve life and apply first aid. Uh, the Scottish Ambulance Service later confirmed that the chest seal applied by these two young officers saved the young man's life. So I just wanted to highlight that one today. And the other one is to highlight uh, Special Constable Victor Monaghan. Now, uh, Vic, as I like to call him, has been with us for 37 years as a volunteer. He joined the policing service in 1987 and has dedicated a lot of his free time
to support in the local communities and works very closely with our community policing team out of Gifflet Police Office. So I wanted to highlight the work carried out by these three officers, which is an example of the, the way our officers in East Remshire go the extra mile every day uh, in delivering safer communities to East Remshire. So thank you for that. Um, thank you very much to um, our divisional commander and area commander for the report. Very strong report for the first quarter of the year. I note your comments have not been complacent, um, but it's very pleasing to see. And thanks for uh, uh, noting the three officers there. I haven't ca captured their names, but uh, hopefully the recording has received all of that and, and, and be noted. So well done to them. Um, so if I could open it up to questions. Um, Caroline Banford, please. Thank you. Um, first of all, can I congratulate the police and especially Strathclyde Fire and Rescue for the 67% decrease in fire raising. It was amazing for those of us that went along to that event. Um, I have one question. It was absolutely brilliant. I think even those who watched it thought it was great fun, never mind the ones that participated. Will you do one for councillors? Anyway, um, the... What I want to know is, is, is if I, I know it's the same old story with everything at the moment, but is funding uh, continuing for that? I don't know if it's more appropriate to ask the fire and rescue um, later, because um, that's my first question. My sec second question is, I, I'm pleased that the violence against women number has gone up for the reasons that, that was mentioned, that, that historic um, issues ha are being highlighted and women feel the confidence to come forward because it's so important. But later on in, in the report you mentioned the domestic violence that a third of them a crime was recorded, which I presume means two thirds weren't. Um, and I just wondered, we know that this d domestic violence is systemic and can happen over a period, of, a long period of time. And I know you've got an excellent unit in the command control centre. Um, do you follow up with these women at some point just to check that maybe in that instance it, it wasn't a crime either by the woman or the man or whatever, but just to check that, that there isn't, you know, things haven't escalated or that there's other things going on. Um, my third question is about fraud, um, and I know you've got the, the scam van, but we all know and we've seen these reports each time, each quarter, that the, the, the scamming when it comes to OAPs tends to be quite substantial amounts of money. Um, and I just wondered, apart from the scam van, if you do anything else proactively, like going out to speak to Age Concern or any of these, you know, they have lots of these lunch clubs and things like that. I know your numbers are, you know, are tight, but I just wonder if you do anything proactive. Same with, I know the libraries do great work in um, helping older people. Um, I think it was yourself that mentioned it, Council of Wallace, as well yeah, last was, night. Yes. Yes, about um, the IT h helping to upskill them. I just wondered if you uh, went along to that, or maybe council officers do that, because it does seem to be a few people, but substantial amounts of money it, it, it happens, it, you know, when, when it does happen, happen. Sorry, my last question, you'll be glad to hear, is about shoplifting. I didn't write down the figures, but it looks like shoplifting has increased by about 50%, and I know that has been an ongoing issue for a while. Is that still the cost of living crisis, we think, or is it that you are being more proactive with shopkeepers and encouraging them to report um, shoplifting, or they're more likely to report, so that, uh, yeah, it just seems quite a, quite a big increase. Thank you. Councillor Bamford, thank you for the, the questions. I'll, I'll come in um, in a few sort of high level points for me, and then I'll, I'll leave it to Graham to, to put that very localised context on it. So, in terms of the violence against women and girls and the domestic abuse point that you raised, which is a, a really valid one, the short answer to the question is yes. So, we have um, as, as you touched on, uh, uh, a public protection unit in, in G Division, as indeed do, do all local policing divisions. And within that sits our domestic abuse investigation unit. So we have very robust and specific protocols around any reports of, of domestic violence uh, that are reported to us. 
Um, within G Division, um, about 97, 98% of those are all attended. So officers physically go out and, and visit the reporters, the victims, um, just to, to do a number of different things. But one of those things is that really important eyes on and doing a bit of reading between the lines and, and, and getting some of the, the more subliminal messaging rather than the specific reporting. When a, a domestic abuse incident or crime is reported to us, it is always highlighted and reviewed by our Domestic Abuse Investigation Unit, and there are a number of specially trained officers within that unit who will then make a follow-up, um, either a follow-up in person, by that I mean over the telephone or indeed a visit, but more importantly and perhaps more productively, we have a whole range of partners that we work with in the domestic abuse environment, and very often they may be best placed to make that, 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 that follow-up contact um, to try and get an understanding of the, the bigger picture. And as you say, if in this instance we've got an incident that doesn't constitute a crime, making sure that, that, that we do follow up by some means or other to make sure that we understand the full picture there. And then, of course, we've got the, the investigation protocols that go, go along with that. So the short answer is yes. The apologies for the slightly uh, longer-winded uh, version. And, Graham, if there's anything that you would want to add to that, by all means. Again, in terms of the frauds, excuse me, um, <clears throat> the short answer is, is yes. There's a huge amount that we do. We're very, very lucky um, at Greater Glasgow Division and that we have a, 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 a significantly sized um, partnerships department who is, it, it does what it says in the TIM. So they have a, a, a role um, very much focused in education and prevention. So they work with a whole range of partners, a whole range of, of groups, help the aged, as you talked about, lunch clubs, um, various media outlets, because we, we know without stereotyping that perhaps our social media channels are not the, the best for um, some of the, the groups who are most affected by this type of crime and getting messages out to them. They also work very, very closely with colleagues in banking and retail because we know that very often these scammers or these fraudsters will ask people to go to banks and withdraw money. They may ask them to go to retail outlets and buy vouchers or, 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 or gift cards. Um, so there are a whole range of activities that are very much based on spreading the word, educating people, raising awareness, and a whole number of groups. And, and Graham may be aware of some locally um, that we work with to make sure that we, we give people, as many people as possible, a, a heads up around this, this uh, particular type of crime. And in your last point around shoplifting, unfortunately that's a, a, a crime that we see increasing locally, regionally, um, and nationally. Um, I have absolutely no doubt that, as you've highlighted, uh, cost of living is a factor in that. And where that is the case, our focus is very much around not bringing people into the criminal justice system. Because if they are shoplifting because of hardship, then we need to look more closely at the welfare and wellbeing aspects of that. So we will signpost um, to um, a number of, uh, again, third sector part partners that can help support with that also food banks, and we also work very closely with the criminal justice system, whereby that doesn't mean that we don't report the matter to the procurator fiscal, but we're very, very careful um, that we make sure that we, we highlight the context to the, to, to, to the fiscal so that they can make informed decisions around that. Cost of living is most definitely um, a, a, a factor in that. I think, again, um, social media and some of the trends that we see around sites such as, without exclusively mentioning TikTok, um, some of the brazen um, shoplifting and behaviours that we see in there um, play a factor in that. I think also, and, and Graham touched on uh, as in the report, we work very closely with retailers around trying to make sure that they put in place all measures that are practically possible in terms of um, reducing the opportunities for easy shoplifting, if you like, because very often displays are, are located next to a till for a reason. Um, they, they want people on their way out of the shop to, to, to grab something that maybe wasn't on the list. But the corollary of that is that these are very frequently um, conveniently located for people who just want to, to, to run in and grab. There's also um, season organised crime that's very much uh, or, uh, focused around shoplifting as well. So there are groups who, who, who's, who are very organised, um, get very um, 
sort of informed tactics that will go in and shoplift um, on a large scale. And it was it was it was very recently featured in an, an article in the BBC News um, about the the benefits of, of, of shoplifting and being able to sell on sometimes to, to other retails retailers. It's not something that we have seen here, but you're right in that um, the reasons for shoplifting are, are very much multifaceted, and 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 we're very much aware of those and, and aiming to to target those. And I will hush there and ask Graham to come in with any sort of local aspects that you might want to add over and above that. Thank you very much, ma'am, and thank you, councillor, for your questions. Uh, I think three of them were answered there quite fully, and you probably don't need any further information from myself. Uh, and the, the fourth one was in relation to the fire raisings and the successful work that's taken place in partnership with the fire service and the council. And I, you know, I thank you for highlighting that and for coming the, the, to the, the demonstration day where we saw, I believe it was about 16 young people pass out on the parade square at the Clarkson Fire Station. Uh, and it was a delight to see uh, them come in in the fire engines, then deploy to a, a road traffic accident, uh, take a victim out of the vehicle, perform first aid, and then put everything away. More importantly, I wish I could get my teenage <laughs> children to tidy up after themselves. Uh, so it was a great day, and I know that in partnership with the fire service, we've, over the summer we've tried to develop that approach uh, with one-day sessions as well. Uh, and I know that there's conversations currently ongoing between the fire service and the council in relation to the, the minimum amount of funding they need to progress that. So I'll leave the funding aspect to my colleagues in the fire service to pick up when, when it comes to their point. Hopefully that answers all your questions. Thank you. Thank you for your report. I've just got a few questions. Uh, one was on housebreaking. I understand uh, levels are the lowest in five years, although you will be aware in this quarter there was two housebreakings in the Netherby area. And yes, it's reassuring that housebreakings are low, but it still does affect those who uh, are victims of this crime. And it's also worrying for their neighbours. Is there anything more we can do to reassure people? Um, I think some of the neighbours felt that they hadn't been given information from the police. And I know resources are quite stretched, but is there anything more that we can do to reassure people? And because Netherly is quite a small community, um, people tend to discuss these issues. Um, also, do we know why there has been an increase in drug deal dealing and use in East Renfrewshire? I know that the numbers are low compared to other parts of Scotland, but just any if you have any details on that. And also, uh, you mentioned areas of focus being young people, and you do amazing work on that. But as we are approaching Freshers' Week, uh, which will be next week for our colleges and universities, has there been aware awareness around the spiking of vapes? So I'm hearing more and more that young people will go to a nightclub and someone will offer them a vape, but it has been spiked. So what more can be done to raise awareness of that? Thanks very much, Councillor, for your questions. Um, so we'll start with the, the housebreaking uh, question initially, and uh, thank you for recognising you know, the lowest level for five years, but we're not complacent about that. And I think one of the big lessons that we learnt last year when we did have a spike in housebreakings was around communication and communicating with different parts of the community because uh, different parts of the community communicate differently. Uh, and it's about us adapting to that. And we've made a lot of effort over the last uh, year to reach out to parts of the community that we maybe hadn't been getting that message through to. Um, and we've looked at different channels of communication in order to do that, whether it's been face-to-face -face or through social media or for pulling together groups that represent communities. And community council meetings are actually a really, really important part of that. And uh, you know, it's one of these areas where we try and promote that, promote that messaging. Uh, if there is a part of the community feel we're not reaching, I'm happy to catch up with you after the meeting today to understand why we might not be able to do that, why we're not doing that currently, and how we can do that better. Uh, in terms of drugs, so uh, drug and drug misuse. So this is a crime area that really is affected by the proactivity of the police. Uh, and we've had a strong focus on that to try and drive that area of business. And that's why the, the figures have increased. And a lot of that isn't about 
proactively being out on the street necessarily. It's about building that intelligence picture. And we can only build that intelligence picture through dialogue with the community and with our partners. And we've worked really hard over the last year to do that. And that's why we're seeing that increase uh, in offences. Uh, finally, around vapes, uh, well, as earlier on, the commander mentioned our partnership department within Greater Glasgow Policing Division. So they, as they run up to Thresher's Week, uh, they have a whole catalogue uh, of interventions and information sessions which they work in conjunction with each of the universities across Greater Glasgow to ensure that that messaging gets out. And this particular messaging will be part of that programme. So hopefully that gives you reassurance around our approach to that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wallace. Thank you. Uh, knife, cr knife crime. Um, you, you've mentioned a couple of incidences there. You've also mentioned about someone wielding an axe and bar head. Um, certainly seem to be getting more reports coming through from, for example, Glasgow's here in Dumbarton Road. Swords getting uh, wielded about. Some uh, horrific stuff going on in the East Kilbride area as well. Um, I'd like to have your overview of, of knife crime, uh, how we're dealing with it here. Is, is there, a, a, is there a, a growing culture of carrying knives? And not just knives, we're talking about, as I mentioned there earlier on, swords, machetes and what have you. And I also believe that there is a, um, is there an amnesty going on just now in which if, if people hand in uh, knives and uh, they get money for that uh, in order to trying to eradicate knives. So if you could just give us a, an overview, that would be helpful. Thanks. Councillor Wallace, thank you for the, the question. It's a, it's a very well-informed one. Um, in relation to the amnesty, um, there is, but it's only in England and Wales. Um, we, we have in the past, um, certainly in the days of, uh, without showing my vintage of, of Strathclyde Police and some of the early days of Police Scotland, we've had similar um, amnesties for, for, for weapons. But um, I, I, you, you highlight what is, I wouldn't quite say it's a trend, but certainly the use of knives and weapons is something that we see um, on the increase. Now, Graham made a really valid point around um, Councillor Pragnell's question about uh, drug dealing. Um, and very often it's proactivity that highlights a, an issue. So, on the one hand, the increase, if you like, it sounds perverse to say, but it's encouraging because it shows police proactivity. So, and, and, and that does often start with intelligence. So we're getting intelligence in to say that people are carrying weapons. The police are being proactive around that through intelligence-led and appropriate use of, of, of stop search. Um, and they are detecting knives, swords, various other weapons that, that people are carrying. But we also know um, that people who are the, unfortunately the victim of, of assaults and, and, and attacks by individuals who are carrying weapons, that is um, in, on the increase in, in, in various areas. So there's a, a, as you might imagine, a multifaceted approach. I've touched on one of those. Proactivity is one. Education and prevention is key because within that increase, we see a bit of an increase in, in, in youths carrying weapons. So we talked about the campus officers and partners in education. They have a crucial role to play in terms of educating young people. And what we know is very, very effective in, in terms of that awareness raising for young people is programmes that are um, about lived experience. So we have a number of programmes that, are, that, that often feature um, offenders, people who have been to prison for similar type crimes, and they will come in and talk about the impact that, that, that committing that crime has had on them, their lives and their family. Similarly, very, very powerful in moving evidence from families who have had a, a loved one taken from them um, because of the use of crimes with weapons. So that is key to us getting people at an early stage and deterring them from carrying weapons. Um, also, um, understanding where and when these types of crimes happen, so make sure that we've got targeted policing resources um, in those areas at, at key times. And also, again, within Greater Glasgow Division, we have what we currently call a Divisional Violence Reduction Unit. Again, without sounding glib, it, it sort of does what it says in the tin. 
We're undergoing a little bit of a review around that just now. They do a really, really valuable, really important job for us and have some really quite phenomenal results. But again, we need to shift that more into the prevention, education and public health approach. Um, combined with that proactivity and reactivity, i.e. where we hear of fights ongoing, and, and Graham touched on a couple of instances where we were alerted to people in the street and we, we, we deployed to those really, really quickly. So it, it, it is um, in some areas on the increase, but please be assured for this area, as you say, relatively speaking, low numbers, but very, very much a focus um, on that education, awareness and prevention, because it's... It, it, it is edifying when you detect uh, and arrest someone who's committed such a crime, but we do not want people to be victims, so it has to be, in my opinion, very much around prevention and education. Do you want to come back? Would you like to come back, Councillor Wallace? Yep. Yeah, just to say thank you for that, and it's very full response, and quite clearly it's something that's um, in, in focus in, in, in police. Um, one other thing, if I could, slightly uh, not directly related. Um, we were invited, councillors were invited to, I think it was the Police Federation, we were having a, um, mm. a conference at Glenick House, which we were invited to, and we got a very passionate um, lobbying exercise uh, from, from members of the Federation, which was very informative. One of the key messages that was coming through was about body cams, uh, the, 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 the way that uh, we have a, a desperate shortage of that uh, with police. Um, just any feedback in terms of how you're getting funding for that and whether that is an issue with, with the force. Thanks. Um, thank you very much. I, I, I saw you at that, that event um, and, as you say, a very impassioned and informed um, input from um, David Threadgold of the Scottish Police Federation. Um, Police Scotland and Police to Say have, uh, in June, awarded the contract for a uh, body-worn video. Some of our officers already have it, so those officers who are trained as um, authorised fire firearms officers and work um, in our armed response vehicles already regularly use body cam. So Police Scotland has awarded the contract in June. Um, there's a lot of work ongoing um, to get us ready for the rollout in spring of 2025. As is very often the case with new technology, we roll it out incrementally because um, it's not just about the, the camera that the officers are wearing, it's about making sure that we're able to charge those units, that we're able to download footage, that we're able to exchange um, footage with key partners such as Crown Officers and, and, and the Procurator Fiscal. So we don't, I don't have the date yet for Greater Glasgow Division getting body-worn video, but as I say, there, it's very much a, a work in progress and full steam ahead um, so that all officers um, over the course of 2025, and I would imagine into early 2026, will, will be um, given a uh, body-worn video. Really, really useful um, tool. And without um, droning on about it in, in great deal here, I'm more than happy to discuss um, any sort of benefits and, um, of that off table, if that would be, if that would be helpful, Councillor. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Anderson. Thank you. Oh, I'll try to be quick. <laughs> uh, but the first thing with regards to, um, as you said, about education, about knives, um, and as Councillor Wallace uh, mentioned uh, about the as amnesty or whatever is England and Wales, but I, I did read about that this morning, and uh, they talked about zombie knives. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the key thing about education in schools, etc., is that life's not a video game. And, you know, the films that um, our young people and the games that they play, uh, it, you know, they, they have to, the, the lived experiences I think you talked about, that's absolutely key for them to differentiate and realise that these things, yeah, just are, shouldn't be part of normal life. Um, so thanks for that. Very glad to hear that. Um, but yeah, and you talked about the campus officers. Um, I read with interest and was very pleased to see about the role that they play in the transition actually for our young people, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like much, but the anxiety, you know, mm -hmm. from going from primary to secondary or whatever, and, and I'm delighted that, that, you know, that we have them and we, we made a point of, you know, supporting the campus police officers. So very glad to see that. Um, moving on to something else, uh, and you talk, you, you used a word that actually was in my mind about the shopper thing, brazen, and I, I read with interest about the, was it the chief executive, I think, the co-op, was actually talking about them not having stores, and, no, it was a, a, and this is in maybe London or wherever, where there was going to be a no-go area where they would actually have to close a store because they, they were regularly 
and it was the type of crime. It wasn't just you know someone trying to sneak in and get away with something. They were just going in and threatening them with violence. So the staff was concerned. So um, I, I believe we don't see that here. No, I'm glad to see you're shaking your head there. Thanks, Graham. Um, but it's concerning that that's the direction that some people are going, as we talked about, the cost of living crisis and the des desperation. So I'm glad to, to hear that. Um, finally, um, a, a body cams. I'm actually um, delighted to hear about that because I, I actually saw something recently. You get lots of police documentaries or um, real-life cases where officers had conducted an interview on, with someone who they didn't suspect of a particular crime at that moment, um, but they were able to go back because they were then um, realised that that person had actually possibly been in, and they actually had body cam footage of something that was in their possession that they didn't they thought was innocent at the time, but it actually linked them to a murder, mm -hmm. um, and the, the, it actually was hugely significant. So the body cams delighted to hear. That that's you know that's something that it was going to be. Sorry, Benny. Final thing, actually. Sorry though. In terms of the new um, the probationary officers that saved that young person's life, I remember that we got four new officers. Are they two of that cohort? Possibly. And I remember you talked about um, you know us getting new resources. If so, then obviously delighted to hear that they were there. You know. So. Yeah, thank you very much, Councillor, for acknowledging all those areas of business. Uh, I'll come to your last one first in relation to the probationary officers. So, yeah, the two officers in question are from different cohorts, but one of them was from the, the original uh, cohort. And uh, we recently received three new probationers to the division in the last month. Uh, so, we've increased the, the number there again, and a welcome uh, addition to our team. As I've talked previously, they, they bring a breadth of knowledge and understanding from previous roles mm. that they've had out with the police, uh, making them rounded individuals, and they're all eager to learn and eager to serve in East Renfrewshire. Um, just one other point I was going to uh, talk about, when we talked about the knife crime, etc., and the education piece. Part of the programme that we do with the fire service in, in relation to the fire raising and couple and reckless acts was actually also around knife crime as well. <coughs> and we worked with the Scottish Ambulance Service in relation to that, and they came and did an exercise with the young people around the outcomes of knife crime in terms of, you know, you talked earlier on about it not being a computer game mm. and what the realities are, the injuries and the deaths that take place from having a, a knife with you. And we know that many young people carry knives for protection, or that's what they tell us. And it's not actually they're going out, setting out to use a knife, but the situations they find themselves in find, mean that these knives end up getting used. So we try at every angle possible to educate our young people across East Renfrewshire to make sure they're as safe as possible. So I don't think there was any, within the other four points raised, any other aspects you needed answered. Hopefully not. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Well, that was a very full discussion and great questions from members, so really appreciate that. I do, do, I do have one question myself, and it refers back to your opening comments about the work that we've done on, uh, with the riots that were happening in, in England and reassuring local communities, hugely important. And we did a lot of similar work in uh, October last year uh, um, here, which was very welcomed by, by our communities in East Renfrewshire. Um, one question that has been raised by members of the public is about, um, is there a means of um, monitoring racially motivated hate crimes? We don't call them out specifically in these reports, but I wonder if that's something, and I don't believe that this is a huge issue in East Renfrewshire, but perhaps it's something that we could think of, um, because obviously we've got a very racially diverse communities, and some may be under more threat at different times than others. So it'd be interesting in your thoughts on that. No, again, a, a very apt um, question. Thank you for it, uh, Councillor Donnell. So we 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 scrutinise um, hate crime very very closely. So we and we also um, understand what. Or, or we record and look at the, the categorisation of that crime, which is a, a very cold term, if you like, for something that's a very personal has a very personal impact. 
but but we we monitor whether something is motivated by race, um, by 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 religion, um, by by gender, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we 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 understand on a daily basis, um, you know, what what that picture looks like. I am pleased to say that within East Renfrewshire, we have not seen any increase in any category of hate crime, um, and certainly not within either racial or, or religious, which, given the events that we've, we've seen, we, we, you can imagine we've, we've, we've had an acute focus on. Um, but what I can say, and it's probably been discussed at, at Cabinet before, we look at hate crime, we discuss hate crime every single, every single morning. We look at the, the, the numbers that we've recorded overnight. We understand what profile they fit. We look to see, um, uh, or, or we, we very frequently have, have very high detection rates, but more importantly, and I would argue most importantly, we always make sure that we follow up with the victims, that we make sure that appropriate support is in place, whether that's been words exchanged in the street or at a shop premises or at a religious premises, depending on the context. But we understand that, and again, we work very, very closely with partners in terms of making sure um, that the, the, the victims of hate crime feel well supported because it does, we do understand that it's a, a, a huge impact. And again, I don't know if you want to say anything around the, the local aspects of that, but that's a broader brush. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. You know, local context is extremely important because uh, it's about place and space uh, as well as people. Uh, and you know, in East Renfrewshire, we have extremely strong links with different parts of the community who could be affected through this. And you acknowledged earlier on the work that took place in October last year and more recently in relation to the riots. And, you know, divisionally we look at this, locally at a subdivisional level, we look at this every morning meeting. Brian and myself will review any hate incidents or hate crimes that have come uh, across the last 24 hours to ensure that we are doing the right things in relation to that. And to support us, the organisation, we have hate crime advisors, so they are specially trained officers who understand not just the legislative side of it, but also the side of the victim in relation to it. Um, so we do work extremely hard in this area, and it's thanks to the partnerships we have with each Emperor Council and other, other agencies and third sector organisations that I think that we haven't seen any significant uh, effect in this area. Yeah. Thanks very much for that. That's very reassuring. I think um, members are acutely aware of the sensitivities in East Renfrewshire. So if we could think about how best we keep members informed on that, yep. uh, particularly in terms of trends, yep. um, is really important. And if there's any emerging trends in any sort of specific areas, I think it's important for members to be aware of that so we actually can supplement the good work that you're doing in the communities and, and give, give that reassurance. So thank you very much for that. So if there are no other questions, um, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda which is item number four, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, performance report for the first quarter of 24-25. And this report's been taken by Group Commander, Area Commander. Good morning, Chair and Committee. Thanks for your initial welcome. It's a privilege to be appointed as a local senior officer for East Renfrewshire, Renfrewshire and Inverclyde, um, specifically to return to the area to work alongside our personnel and partners to contribute to the safety of the communities of East Renfrewshire. I say return as I started my career 22 years ago along the road at Clarkson Fire Station and have also spent time at Barhead and spent a number of years as the Fire Safety Enforcement Officer for East Renfrewshire. Um, I've only recently come into post, Chair, so um, as I wasn't in post in Q1, it's appropriate to hand over to Alan, who I know you all know well, to present, in my opinion, a largely positive Q1 performance report, but as our police colleagues have already said, we are not complacent and are focused on our ethos of continuous improvement. Alan, over to you. Thank you. Um, so good morning, everyone. Chair, thank you for the opportunity to present our performance report for Q1, covering the period from the 1st of April to 30th of June 2024. This report measures our performance against the key priorities within our local plan for East Remshire and the challenges we encounter within our communities. It also highlights our continued commitment to address these challenges and the positive work conducted by the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in conjunction with our partners to resolve them. Prior to going through my report, I would like to give you an update on the Strategic Service Review Programme, or SSRP as we call it, 
which was established in 2023 to explore how we deliver our services across the whole of Scotland whilst resolving the financial challenges that we currently face. So SSRP will focus on reviewing our service delivery footprint and our infrastructure, where our stations and appliances are based, how and when we staff our resources, designing the future of operational training, developing our prevention approach to meet the needs of our communities, addressing the estate's challenges that we have, including the provision of dignified facilities and contamination controls, and reviewing how we support and enable frontline service delivery, such as our corporate services. There are, these are changes that we must make to help uh, build a modern, sustainable fire and rescue service across Scotland, and that is ready to face the challenges of Scotland's future. The, the survey to capture the views of the communities across Scotland is now closed, with more than 6,400 responses that were received. Uh, from staff, stakeholders and members of the public. To help us reach as many communities as possible across Scotland, we held more than 80 in-person engagement events with stakeholders and members of the public. So we held one locally here at Clarkston Station and one outside Waitrose. Um, these events generated approximately 1,500 hard copy responses from a range of community groups and local organisations. Of the responses received, approximately 45 per cent were completed by members of the public that was a total of 2,930, and approximately 30 per cent completed by staff, which was 1,938. The views we have gathered will help to develop options for full public consultation. So we're currently in the options appraisal process just now, or that phase of the, the, the process, uh, and that includes creating an extensive list of options, followed by a series of workshops throughout the autumn to refine it further to create a short list. This will be followed by a public consultation exercise, and the SFRS Board will approve the final decision on any proposed changes. I um, will continue to update Cabinet as information becomes available to us. Um, so thank you, Chair. I will now go through the report for Q1. Uh, firstly, I would like to give you an overview of engagement activity and equipment that we have supplied during this reporting period. So community activities carried out by our operational crews and our community action team totaled 96 during this period and our home fire safety visits conducted were 211. From the home fire safety visits conducted, we had high risk, we had 65, and we conducted 52 post-domestic incident responses, which is activity that we carry out following an incident where we'll knock on people's doors either side or upstairs, downstairs of the incident uh, to make sure they've got safety provision in place and give relevant advice. So from that, we generated a further 55 home fire safety visits. Um, so moving on to the first indicator, which is accidental dwelling fires, it is positive to note a significant decrease of 38% on the year-on-year -year indicator, as well as a decrease of 7% within the three-year average. Cooking is again the main contributor, accounting for over 90% of the activity. However, again, it is encouraging to note that detection was present and actuated in all of the, during all of the incidents, thus providing early warning. Our operational crews and our community action team continue to work with our partners to identify high-risk individuals within our communities, and to support the identification process, our community action team continue to deliver fire service experiential training to relevant partners. So, for example, uh, within the council, we're, we're delivering this training to housing officers and, and various other departments um, out through the local authority, home carers, care home staff, and district nurses. Um, who, these people engage regularly with and have access to the most vulnerable within our communities, so they are able to identify risk at source and then refer that to us. Um, our operational crews and our community action team also continue to prioritise home fire safety visits through both our website and our referral pathways, and they continue to conduct targeted local initiatives in areas where there has been more than one accidental dwelling fire. All of this work supports cell identification, which, as we know through our data, is key in reducing this type of activity. In terms of accidental dwelling fire casualties, there have been two accidental dwelling fire casualties within this reporting period, which has resulted in an increase on the year-on-year -year indicator of 100% and a 33% increase on the three-year average. However, it is important to note that this is measured against historically low figures and that there was detection in both premises which actuated providing early warning. This potentially minimises injury to the persons within. Both casualties were taken to hospital, one female suffering from smoke inhalation and one male for a precautionary checkup. Having working smoke detection, which actuates at incidents of this nature, confirms that we are still accessing the most vulnerable within our communities through our engagement strategies. 
Our post post domestic incident response, as I have spoken about, continues to be an extremely effective process by which to gain access to these premises following operational incidents, and this identifies individuals at risk of harm within their home environment. The process allows us to offer a home fire safety visit, relevant advice, and signpost to our partners where relevant. Our continued work with our partners in the GRIP and the Safer East End groups also allows us to highlight individuals of concern and discuss the support mechanisms which are available. It also allows us to share relevant information on trends and areas of high activity to apply a partnership approach to assist in prevention of injuries sustained through fire in the home environment. Uh, next, I will move on and cover unintentional harm. So again, it is encouraging to know a significant reduction of 50 per cent in this type of activity um, on the year-on-year -year indicator, as well as a 14 per cent decrease on the three-year average. And it is also important to take into account that 40 per cent of the activity in this indicator is attributed to assisting other agencies. So road traffic collisions continue to be a major contributor to this indicator, with six during this period. Um, this resulted in four casualties. Two of the casualties sustained minor, minor, minor injuries. One casualty was recovered from underneath a car and removed to hospital, suffering from life-threatening injuries, and a further casualty who was trapped between a car and a wall was also removed to hospital, again suffering from life-threatening injuries. During this reporting period, we also assisted our colleagues within the Scottish Ambulance Service on 19 occasions by effecting entry into premises. This resulted in one fatality. We also assisted one child stuck in a roundabout within a play park, one child stuck in a washing machine, um, one child stuck in a crib, as well as one male assisted from a river. Um, our prevention team continued to deliver our schools programme, including the Young Driver Initiative and our virtual reality scenarios to older school children who are starting on their driver, their driver pathway. However, we are also continuing to identify suitable groups of all ages to deliver our driver safety presentation to, because due to our um, identification of trends and the, the demographics, the age demographic within the area, it is important that we are recognising the appropriate groups to deliver that presentation to. Moving on now to deliberate fire setting. It is positive to report a 42 per cent decrease within the year-on-year -year indicator and a 28 per cent reduction in the three-year average. Refuse fires are again a key contributor within this indicator, with there being 18 grassland fires during this reporting period. We also recorded two vehicle fires within this period and one domestic <coughs> dwelling fire, which was a tenant burning waste in an unsafe manner on the veranda of a privately owned property. Um, our ongoing collaborative approach with Police Scotland and East Renfrewshire Council has significantly reduced the impact of this type of incident within this reporting period, and our approach to minimising deliberate fire setting by delivering our youth engagement programme to our schools through our education calendar, and as we have already spoken about, hosting our fire skills courses, which we, we hope to continue with, um, has had a positive impact in reducing this activity. Our prevention team continue to provide advice and support to relevant premises and local businesses to reduce the risk of deliberate fire setting due to inappropriate storage of refuse around their premises. Moving on now to non-domestic fire safety. Though there has been a 100 per cent increase on the annual indicator within this category, it is measured against again historically low figures. This is highlighted in the 15 per cent reduction within the three-year average. It is also worthy of note that all incidents were accidental and resulted in minimal damage to the properties involved. The four incidents concerned during this reporting period were one private garage um, damaged by bushes, bushes which were setting fire to the rear of it, one private shed which was damaged by someone using a stove within, a pot left in a cooker within a sheltered housing complex, and a fryer on fire within a food establishment. Um, both commercial promise, uh, premises had minimal damage and were subject to a post-fire audit by our, office, uh, our auditing officers, and the duty holder received support and guidance to avoid a, a recurrence of this type of activity. Um, finally, moving on to UFAS, or unwanted fire alarm signals, it is positive to report a reduction of 65 per cent against the year-on-year -year indicator and a 23 per cent decrease against the three-year average. However, again, it is disappointing to note that the majority of the UFAS incidents within this reporting period were avoidable and caused by human error or faulty equipment predominantly within the care setting. We continue to experience a decrease in UFAS activity following the introduction of the new procedure, um, and our operational crews continue to provide guidance and support to duty holders at all UFAS incidents, 
and record feedback um, and provide the, the, the data which is recorded back to our UFAS champions, which are based within our stations in East Renfrewshire. Any areas of concern or high activity are reported to our enforcement team to allow them to engage at the earliest opportunity to investigate and implement remedial action. Chair, this concludes my report for Q1. Um, thank you again for the opportunity to present it, and I'm happy to take any questions yourself or any other members may have. Thanks very much, Kevin and Alan, for a very thorough report and, again, a very strong performance in, in the first quarter of this year. Particularly pleasing to see that for accidental dwelling fires, um, detection was in place in 100% of those events, so that's really very reassuring. So if I could ask members to be brief on any questions, because we're already late for our next meeting. So, uh, Councillor Pragman. Thank you. It was just to welcome Kevin to your new post. I know you've got big boots to fill uh, with David's retirement, and I hope you enjoy uh, your time you're spending in East Renfrewshire. Uh, also, um, I want to know the work, Alan, you've been doing with Provost uh, for CPR training, and I was wondering if when more training sessions were being organised at both Clarkson and Barhead uh, fire stations, that you could send us more details of that. Uh, the one question I have is the UFAS and sheltered housing accommodation. I know that a lot of these blocks are privately owned, um, but is there something more that could be done with the factors of these buildings and the duty holders? Because there are sometimes wardens, but not necessarily all the time now. Thanks, Councillor. Um, so on the, on the first question, CPR, so I'll, I'll send out the dates that we're, we're hosting an event um, in Barhead in the morning, Clarkston in the afternoon, where you can come in off the street um, as in October, and I'll send you through the details. So anybody at all that wants to attend, come in and we'll provide CPR training. Um, we're also going to be running a few other events, which will be exactly the same, and I'll pass the, the details round about Cabinet um, when they become available. Our community action team is supporting that, but it's also really important for the operational crews to be involved. Um, they're the experts and they're dealing with it every day. We have um, kits within our fire stations which we can use, so we can take probably 10, 20 people at a time. That's not to say we can, we can host more through the day, but at any one time to get hands-on experience, so I'll pass out details on them. Um, in regard to UFAS and our engagement, so we have a few different things that's, that's in place there, and we've identified it used to be within the, the education um, environment, and it's moved on now to the care environment. Um, the, the challenge there is if we don't have appropriate measures in place, or, or the, the duty holder doesn't have appropriate measures in place for maintenance of the equipment, um, people not phoning and putting the, the, the system offline when they're carrying out testing, but we have a very robust system in place to, um, to manage this. And that starts initially with our local crews. So every event that they, they attend, the process we have in place is they'll record that. And that goes on to a spreadsheet, and that's very, very robustly managed. The information from that is then passed on to the station commander within the, the relevant station and also to our enforcement officers. Um, we, we've got a process in place where you'll hit a target and you'll move on to the next target, and there's different levels of intervention during that process. But we feel that... Um, Early intervention is how you deal with us. So, for example, um, we had a local shopping centre where we had high activity and send an enforcement officer around there to carry out engagement with each individual shop within there, um, highlight the identified cost involved, highlight the um, disturbance involved, depending on what the environment is. Um, that, that's resolved that and taken that away, so we've got very minimal impact there. I'm glad to say that across East Renfrewshire we don't have any one um, establishment where there's high activity. So it is, and again, you can see the numbers there over a quarter, and we're getting you know, one here and, and one there. But we'll continue to manage that. And, and early intervention and recording of that, and then sending our enforcement officers out is key to, to driving that down. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bamford. So much under about UFAS, I always ask about UFAS, and I notice the costs have gone up 50%, and I appreciate what you're saying about being proactive, but does there come an end point where, and I know we don't want to discourage people from phoning or putting them off, but is there, does there not come an end point where you have to, with all the preventative stuff, a, a way of finding, um, and I think we've discussed this before, but have you rethought it? Um, my other thing is just a comment. 
it's a great report and I'm trying not, I don't want to give anyone any extra work and I know this report is in response to the previous Police and Fire Cabinet where it was requested that there, there be more graphics and, and less words but you know not everyone listens to the report you've just given which is, is incredible the stuff that you're doing and the police report is a lot more wordy but it shows a lot of the proactive stuff they're doing I don't know that anyone here might object or might not. I would like to see a lot more in this report of all the proactive stuff you are you are telling us about, you know, all the stuff about the, the number and putting even the numbers in for the home fire safety visits um, to show what, you, what you're doing um, because people don't appreciate how much you actually do and the t diversionary work, we all know about it, but not the public. And if someone goes online the council and downloads that report, it doesn't, I don't think it shows the full picture of really the amount of really good work that you do and the work in schools. None of that is mentioned here. We know it. And if somebody goes onto YouTube and watches this, they will know it. But if they don't, as I say, I'm not trying to give anyone extra work. I just don't feel that your reports now give the full picture to people about how much you do. So apologies for giving somebody extra work. So, so could I just come in before they respond? I think that's very good comments and you know your report is always about the proactive elements of of what you're doing in, in the area um, but uh, as uh, Councillor Bamford said we don't want to add extra work to you but I noticed you had it written down all, already anyway so perhaps this isn't too much and I don't think we need a huge volume I'll just ask other members what what their thoughts are yep yeah, definitely um, there is so, so much proactive work. I'm actually concerned that um, if people aren't aware of it. Um, the veranda, like you know, burning, that they actually become complacent, and you know they they don't realise what is happening and the consequences potentially. I don't want folk to actually think that fires are less of an issue, or they can still definitely happen if they do. So perhaps if if you could consider that, you know, it's. Um, of how best to sort of reflect that and it is about all the good proactive work that you are doing out in the area um, so that there is that sort of permanent record uh, in the public domain. If you could have a think about that. Uh, thanks very much councillors. It's a, a really valid point and myself and Alan actually had a discussion yesterday about the layout of the report which obviously is defined um, historically and we do have to contain certain performance indicators in it. but. It's became through time quite difficult for us to even format and produce in this fashion. So um, additional narrative, like as you say, Chair, that, that Alan has already noted down on his own laptop, we can find a way of adding that as an, an appendix at the, at the rear of the report to give you that um, positive engagement style information. Thank you. And just on that, I think if you think there's a better way of presenting, leave that to you guys to sort of consider um, um, how, how best you'd like to present. Any other questions? Are we good? I think we're good. So with that, um, I'd like to thank our colleagues from Police and Fire. Very informative sessions, two very positive reports for the first quarter of the year, so I really appreciate that. And very good interaction, I think, from, from our members, but I probably would say that anyway. But um, I, I think that we've had a very good discussion, so thank you very much. And that's the end of today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you.